Gordon Murray's T50 supercar was arguably the car reveal of 2020, being a true successor to the McLaren F1 and bringing fan car tech to the road. Of course, after launching the car, everyone was asking whether Gordon was going to take this car racing. And now we have our answer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the T50S Niki Lauda, with that name paying tribute to Gordon's ex-Brabham teammate who famously drove the BT46B fan car and probably would have thoroughly enjoyed the recipe of this track weapon. There will be 25 made, with each chassis being designated a badge that coincides with one of Gordon's F1 wins, the first chassis being called Kailami 1974. The biggest change is clearly the aero. This is what happens when one of the greatest automotive engineers of all time gets to throw away the road car rulebook while still keeping to that base T50 chassis. The T50S has a front splitter that has a small aerofoil section which essentially forms a small front wing. Some of the biggest dive planes I've ever seen on a car outside of F1 and LMP1 and also a set of barge boards down the side. So those are going to weld the front axle to the floor as well as clean up the air heading towards the rear of the car. Then, like all prototype race cars these days, there's a shark fin travelling from the roof scoop back to the rear wing for high speed stability, and then look at that rear wing with its creased in end plates that seem to angle everything back towards the car and actually visually help that dual element rear wing not look too big for the car. And then once you fully swing around the back, that wing, the now quite familiar 400mm fan, and then look at the gradient, the steepness of the rear diffuser. Here you can very clearly see that Professor Murray has been able to make them crazy steep due to how good a job the fan is doing of sucking the air through them. Normally you would get unwanted flow separation when you make a diffuser that steep with normal airflow, but the sheer volume of air coming through it means you can make it crazy steep and send the downforce levels through the roof. Speaking of the fan, unlike the T50 road car that has different aerodynamic modes that alternate the fan speed, the T50S has its fan constantly on full blast to create the highest amount of downforce possible. In fact, I had a video call with Gordon Murray a few weeks ago and he admitted to me that the T50S actually created too much downforce originally. After all the CFD was said and done, the car created 1.9 tonnes of downforce. That's a scary amount in a car that once you strip the interior out and lighten the engine, weighs in at just 852 kilograms. That was simply too much downforce for what Gordon was looking for. Here's a quick snippet from our chat. Okay, so what does the 1900 kilo car look like compared to the 1500 kilo downforce car? What's the that difference? Had, that had more aggressive front aero, bigger diffusers, because we've got diffusers on the front as well, we have the front wheels. It ran a steeper camber rear wing, same size rear wing, steeper camber rear wing. So we could easily, I mean, if we wanted to go and try and beat lap times, we, we could probably get it up to over two tons. And at that weight, um, it's going to smash a few records. But I, I really, once again, crack record stuff, not interested in breaking lap time records because, you know, this is all about the ultimate track car experience and it has to be accessible. It has to be easy to run, you know, without needing special engineers and all that stuff. And it has to be comfortable and quick and enjoyable for people to actually want to go out and use it. So that's why we backed it. We backed it off. Yeah, I think that's definitely my title. Gordon Murray's supercar creates too much downforce. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, was, it, it was amazing, actually. I mean, we, we, could have, we could have kept going. You know, we had different dive planes on the front. We could have kept going, but we thought, that's just steady on, that's just for fun. That's not going to be fun for an, a good amateur driver. I was really interested to see the, the CFD model for the T50 road car. I cannot imagine what the CFD now looks like on T50S. It must, with that fan going full tilt, it must look insane. I'm going to make a note, thank you for that. I'm going to make a note because I'd like to get some images um, maybe we could put in the press release um, oh yeah that'd be amazing that's, uh, thanks for that Mike that's a really good idea I'll, I'll get on to the guys today 
It's crazy to think that this aero has been pared back from that original design, with the T50S Nicky Lauda now only creating 1.5 tonnes of downforce. 1.9 tonnes was deemed simply too much for the average supercar owner and their neck muscles, especially when you match that package with a set of Michelin slicks. Something that you'll need to train your neck and core muscles for, however, is the revised engine. The original Cosworth V12 in the T50 road car was already mental, revving to 12,100 RPM at a rate faster than any road car before it. But the Cosworth engineers have managed to eke out even more power from that 3.9 litre naturally aspirated engine, using a revised cylinder head and camshafts to have the peak power now at 725 brake horsepower. This is aided by a higher compression ratio and also a more simplistic induction system that uses 12 individual throttle bodies all fed from that savage roof scoop up top. And this is a track car so it doesn't need any cats. So this 12,000 RPM supercar is straight piped. <laughs> Another big change has been the transmission. That short throw manual shift in the road car has made way for an X-Track paddle shift box, which can either be geared for 210 miles an hour for those high speed circuits, or just 170 miles an hour on those tight technical layouts. Now that may seem like a bit of a shame compared to the manual road car, but the rate that this thing is expected to go around tracks at means that a manual gearbox would simply be a hindrance. Here's what Gordon had to say. But is that also to do with the power increase? Could the manual deal with no, that new power? Not, not at all. All to do with drivability again. But everything, I can't stress enough. As with 50, you know, everything on 50 is aimed at doing the best road driving experience in supercar. And this is the same thing on track. And honestly, in H, when you're generating that much acceleration and deceleration and lateral force, trying to change gear with one hand off the steering wheel and an eight packing gearbox wouldn't be fun. <laughs> so it's very different from a road car, the track experience, you know, so we thought we would have to go to a paddle shift. So we designed a completely new gearbox with extra. So the big question is, where will this thing race? Well, there isn't a current championship for it, but the ball will start rolling with T50 specific track days at European circuits, with the aim being to then create a championship that will be similar to the BPR series of the 1990s called the GT1 Sports Club. That will be racing supercars that have been trackified and made downforce heavy. That's essentially a middle finger up to the Le Mans hypercar fiasco, because you can actually race a car that you can theoretically buy and drive on the road. Imagine a championship that snaps up all the cars that didn't quite make it to Le Mans. T50, Valkyrie, Senna, 4GT Mark II, whatever Ferrari puts out soon, something from Koenigsegg and even the Bugatti Belide that we had on the channel a few weeks ago. The T50S will cost £3.1 million pounds plus taxes and production will start in December 2021 after the 100 T50 road cars have been finished. The prototypes are currently putting in the hard miles and Gordon is apparently getting behind the wheel very, very soon, which means that we're frustratingly close to the T50 changing the supercar game forever. I will do everything in my power to follow the development of this car and get it on the channel when physically possible. And if you would like to watch the full interview with myself and Gordon Murray about this car, it's over on my own personal channel, Mike Drive Tribe, the link to which is in the description below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I've been Mike, and don't forget to subscribe to Drive Tribe.